It's day three, we're into mid-autumn, and our crops are ready for harvest. So we need to kind of get our equipment in place and take it over to the relevant fields. Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to Seasons in the Valley. So both our corn field and our soybean fields are ready for harvesting. So we're going to take both headers with us so that we can uh, save a trip back to the farm in between different crops. And I think the easiest way is for us to go out across the dirt roads. This is going to be a bit bumpy heading out there. But once we hit the road, we'll be fine. We can cruise straight down to our additional fields that we have in the north part of the map. So uh, fields at 24, 25 are linked as one field. And then field 26, they all have soybean on them. And then fields 2 and 6 linked together in the uh, top left near the biogas plant. They are our corn fields and they are also linked together. You can see also our cover crop has come in. Our oilseed radish has started to grow. Well, I say it has started to grow. It has grown. It only has obviously that one stage of growth, uh, which means we can get that cultivated into the ground before the end of autumn. And uh, we'll have an extra stage of fertilization ready for when we plant our crops proper in spring. I'm assuming that also means our uh, barley has grown as well. Let's nip out in front of this car here. Although I suppose we should probably have let him go through. Seeing as we are going to be moving a little bit slower than he is. Let's, uh, let's pull over to the inside and let's let him go through. is so today we are going to be suffering <laughs> again with that slowdown from those trees um, really hope that that is one of the things that gets fixed with the update uh, today we are going to be doing our harvesting and if we get time, we will try and cultivate our cover crop into our ground as well. It means we get to use our cultivator that we haven't used yet on the farm. Because I do want to change up our planting crops down on some of these fields a little bit. So we're not planting the same things on the same fields again next year. Uh, so I'm thinking that one of these fields, we're going to be planting soybean down here. I'm also thinking that one of these fields with a cover crop will be planting sunflowers on because we haven't done sunflowers yet. And we do have a header that is you know, compatible with sunflowers. We've got it right in front of us just there. So we don't have to worry about buying in specialized equipment for that. And we have a planter that can cope with that as well. So uh, I would like to maybe put sunflowers on one of our fields next year. In which case, you know, we would need to cultivate the crop in rather than using our direct drill seeder because the maestro will not direct drill. It needs freshly cultivated soil to work. So I've got to take this all the way up to the top of the map. This is going to take us a little while because we're only moving at 14 miles an hour. And then once that's in position, I then need to go back to the farm and grab RT7 with a trailer. Really bad juddering, as you can see. So this is going to take a little while. But as you can see, as it is autumn, you can see that the bushes are starting to change. They're starting to go to quite a brown colour. And these trees, you can see they're starting to uh, to change as well. Oh, wow, the juddering's really bad. I think this is part the trees, part seasons itself, with all those custom colours popping in. I think that's also what's causing some of this juddering. It's really bad at the moment. Hopefully as we get over this bridge, it'll clear up a bit. Yeah, there we go. It's cleared. But look at this, how cool does this look? With these orange trees and, and light brown trees everywhere. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? And there you can see there is uh, one of our two soybean fields. There's the other one, just the other side of the fence. We'll be harvesting those first and then moving on 
across the top of the map to go and do our corn. That's kind of the order that we're going to go through. But yeah, look how much the map has changed with that little change of colour. That's such a pretty look. Oh, this is our turn. These trees look absolutely fantastic. Autumn really is a beautiful time of year for us to be doing our work like this. Alright, so let's drop the header trailer just here. We need to drop off the header that we're carrying as well. Obviously, we don't need that on this part of the map. Try and avoid... I probably should have parked the trailer in a slightly better position. We've got this telegraph pole here. Oh, there's no collisions on the pole. I forgot about that. So, uh, I'll try and act as though it did have collisions, but uh, he says backing straight through it. <laughs> Whoops. All right, so next time I will try and pretend as though that there are collisions on that there. But uh, yeah, we're going to get in and we're going to harvest our soybeans. So let's get the combine kind of in position. There we go. Uh, now we need our uh, T7 because that's going to have the grunt that we need to pull a fully laden trailer. And we'll use the first of our two trailers. This is our basic, this is our crop trailer because it has the cover on it. I like to distinguish the two that way. So this is our crop trailer. And then the other trailer is our sort of wood chip trailer with that larger capacity. And just look how different everything looks. All these bushes. These are great. I mean, look at the colours. It's not just one colour, you can see there's a lot of different colours in there. It looks absolutely fantastic and they change as the light hits them as well. That's the other thing I really like, you know, the sun lighting is brilliant with Seasons and you can see just how much it changes the look of a tree depending on where the light is hitting it. Looks absolutely brilliant. Right, I will meet you on the field when we're ready to start our harvest. Okay, so our trailer is up in position. Time to start harvesting. We're going to do this field, uh, quite a bit of this field, I think we're probably going to end up doing manually. At least, you know, a, a couple of passes around the edge because it's such a weirdly shaped field. that an AI would really struggle trying to work on this field in a straight line. Plus we have this fence as well which is going to really restrict our turning radius. So a couple of widths around the, uh, the perimeter of the field will certainly give us a good turning area. And you can see this is where the field straightens out and this is where it's going to be easier for our worker once we get onto this bit here. But our turning ends at the bottom of the field and back there at the top need to be at least two widths just to give us some kind of room. Not just for maneuvering, uh, maneuvering the combine but also for maneuvering our uh, tractor and trailer as well. And you can see on the forecast, we do have rain forecast, uh, you know, a little bit later. If I just jump out the combine for a second, pull out our uh, Wopster, you can see our ground moisture level at the moment is only 5%. That, oh, sorry, our crop moisture is only 5%. Now, that's important because if it gets, when, when it starts raining, obviously, we can't thresh during the rain that'll automatically just you know stop us from being able to do any harvesting but once it dries out we have to wait for the crop moisture to dry out su sufficiently before we can get going again and it's not like in farming sim traditional farming simulator sort of uh, rainfall where you just 
wait, it stops raining. The skies brighten up a bit. You probably have to wait maybe 15, 20 minutes in game and then boom, you're up and running again. In this, we could potentially be out of commission for hours or even the rest of the day, depending on when that rain falls. So it's important that we get this done as quickly and efficiently as we can because of that impending rain. The more we can get done before it rains, the better, because the later it rains in the day, the bigger the likelihood is that we're done harvesting for the day. So I really do want to try and get all, at least all of the soybean done before that rainfall hits. And I have no idea when it's going to hit. I mean, you know, it's, it's showing there with a second symbol behind it of sun to show that the weather will brighten up again afterwards. But again, this is not like traditional farming simulator. You know, we've seen in the past that, you know, what we think is going to be a long period, you know, sorry, a quick period before it starts to change weather, can end up being a very long period indeed. We had it on seasons, um, on our seasons enabled American Midwest, where it scheduled rain and it looked like rain was imminent and it still took another six hours or so for that rain to actually fall. And then when it did fall, it fell for a very long time and for the rest of the day. Luckily, we were only doing planting, so it didn't make any difference. But if we'd been harvesting and that rain fell when it did, that would have been it for the rest of the day. There's no way the crops would have dry, uh, dried out at all. And it probably would have been the same going into the morning as well. We probably still wouldn't have been able to harvest in the morning. We would more than likely would have had to wait till midday for the crops to dry out. Now obviously with seasons we do have this variable climate and also means we have the variable temperatures as well. If we do have wet crops they are much more likely to dry out quickly in the summer than compared to in spring or autumn. And I say spring because obviously we're planting winter barley so rainfall in the spring is also going to be critical when it comes to harvesting that barley. Let's clear out this section here. This gives us our turning area at this end of the field. And then we can get our worker to run up and down the field for us. You can see that our expenses are around six and a half thousand a day at the moment, which is quite a lot. Part of that is down to our sort of vehicle costs and uh, a little bit of leasing in there as well. Obviously, we have that baler that is leased, and so we have to pay uh, a daily fee on that. But it's also it, because of the size of our loan, you know, we're paying quite a bit in interest. This is why I always, when I have spare cash, always try and put it straight back in the bank to reduce the loan down just a little bit so that you know we can then hopefully find ourselves in a uh, position where we're paying less interest each day so we're not losing as much money every time the clock hits midnight. Yeah, the important thing, as I say, though, is to try and get as much of this field harvested before the weather changes. And so far, it looks as though we're going to have a very strong start to the day. Weather-wise, it doesn't look like we have this imminent rain at the moment. You can see we've got this blazing blue sky here. Lovely sunshine. Absolutely no threat of rain at the moment whatsoever. But it doesn't mean it isn't coming. Because it is. And it's just a question of when it hits. Again, I'm just creating this little turning area. For our AI worker. I'm really curious as to what kind of volume of crop we're going to get on our soybean across the two fields. Hopefully it's going to be a lot because we need to sell this and make as much money from it as possible. So that means we'll be holding on to this crop, I think, with soybean until the summer of next year, is when it's predicting it's going to be at its absolute best value. Now, if that happens to coincide with a great demand, all the better, 
because we can sell the whole lot um, in one go. But if worst comes to worst and we end up with, say, 40,000, then we can fit that all into our larger of our two trailers. And if necessary, then we will use that to sell the whole lot in one go rather than using our standard grain trailer with a 34,000 litre capacity. We'll switch to the other power push trailer with a 46,000 litre capacity and use that one instead. So now that I've brought the trailer back in, I've resumed control of the combine and I'm working in a slightly different fashion just to try and make it a little bit easier for running up and down the field. So I'm going down this field and then I'm cutting a slight angled cut along the bottom each time trying to level it out a little bit more and then coming back up this side and then just uh, not cutting it at the top. I'm trying to create a nice, good shaped remaining piece so that when we do transition back over to the worker it's going to be very very easy for him to run straight up and down the field but I am a little bit quicker with the harvesting in terms of the turns and so on and so forth than a worker is plus it's cheaper if I do it myself so uh, until I'm in a position where I'm comfortable with the field I will continue to sort of do this field here myself manually and then I'll switch over to the worker a little bit later on Yeah, we have a great demand for wood chips. It's going to last for 24 hours. So uh, let me just hire a worker for a second. Uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll wait till we... I'll uh, do the worker when we get across the top and go onto the longer stretch of the field. Uh, I don't want to get him cutting at this point because then I'll make a mess of that bottom piece there. I have smoothed the angle out quite a bit over the last couple of passes. let's take a look at the current market price because uh, we are getting closer to winter so they could actually be worth a fair amount of money and we are going to be chopping down a few more trees plus we have all those logs in uh, in storage at the lumber mill so let's get the worker hired get him off and running uh, let's see what is the current price of wood chips 283 this is a 24-hour great demand, so I'm assuming that this is going to go up through the day. If we take a look at wood chips on here, you see they're still pretty low on the actual cost. I mean, we could make a, a, a decent amount of money today, but if we were to sell them at the end of autumn, just in three days' time, we would stand to make a substantially larger amount, although we wouldn't have a great demand. Hmm... This is tricky. I think we'll keep an eye on this great demand. It's a 24-hour one, so we've got plenty of time. And, oh, it's getting cloudy. The rain is coming. It's coming really early. Oh, this could, this could screw up our entire day. You can see, look, it's starting to get that cloudy, foggy kind of feel. Which means that rain is going to hit us any moment. We might get a couple more passes out of this, so I need to get back into the combine and do as much of this as I can before that rain does hit, because otherwise, we are as soon as it does, we're screwed. We're going to have to wait an eternity for that to do. So I think that's basically just decided it for us. We are going to be doing some wood chipping today um, and take advantage of that great demand. But now you'll be able to see what happens to the crop moisture level as soon as that rain hits it's yeah it's getting darker every second look okay so i've got control of the combine again we're going to we're not even going to finish this field not even going to get close to finishing this field ah oh, that's such a shame that's going to yeah we might have time to come back and finish off our soybean at the end of the day but it's kind of unlikely, I think. And we're certainly not going to have time to do the corn. So we kind of brought the header up here for absolutely no reason. I should have thought about that with the weather. 
that we wouldn't have time to get all of our crops done. That was a little bit silly of me, a little bit careless. Okay, so the race is on now. How much more of this can I get done before that rain does hit? If I'm really, really lucky, I can at least get this field finished. It's getting very dark now. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, look, look how dark it is now. Yeah, that rain's going to hit any second. And there it is. There is the rain. Ah, well, that's a shame. We didn't get anywhere near as much done as I was hoping we were before the change in the weather. We aren't going to take the equipment home. We are going to leave it up here. Because it, obviously this rain is going to stop. Hopefully it's not a long period of rain. It's not too long a shower. If it is just a shower, then that'll be good for us. You know, we can come back and uh, hopefully the crops will continue to dry out enough through the rest of the day for us to come back and at least finish this field. But if it's a heavy rainfall that lasts for hours and hours and hours, then we may well be done for the day when it comes to harvesting. Oh, if it's like this here... What's it going to be like on Garala with our Wales mod? You can see now we have the uh, the uh, moist crop symbol that's uh, popped up next to our heads-up display on the top right there. Let's see what the crop moisture level is now. See, it's only 6% at the moment. That's not the issue. The fact that it's raining is the issue. Uh, it's what this level is going to be once this has finished raining. Hmm. It, if it gets really, really bad, then uh, it's going to take a very, very long time for us to let that dry out. Right, let's take a look. Still 283. It's a bit early in the day still for us to maybe sell those wood chips. But what I am going to do is I'm going to leave this trailer here. We're going to go back to the farm. We're going to grab our other trailer and we're going to make our way over to the sawmill with that just in case we do end up selling some wood chips we'll be able to sort of just take those straight out the silo and transfer them over to the sell point so uh, I will see you back at the farm in just a moment so here we are then back at the farm in the T6 now, as I said, all is not lost. We do have other jobs that we can get done. So I've already parked the T7 and the trailer up at the sawmill. We'll keep an eye on the great demand price. And uh, you know, if it continues to improve, we'll probably sell a good chunk of some wood chips today. Uh, but we're going to use our cultivator. Now, how badly are we lurching on this? Uh, a little bit. It is pulling the, uh, the nose up a little bit. Yeah. I noticed on that bump that the front wheels actually skipped off the ground. So we are going to need a little bit of weight on the front of this. Uh, I think the 1500 will be absolutely fine. There we go. Oh yeah, that's definitely changed the, uh, the profile of the tractor. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go and cultivate our oilseed radish into the ground. Now, as I say, we may well end up using a direct drill seeder and planting a regular grain onto these fields, but seeing as we have this bad weather, it does give us the opportunity to actually go ahead and just cultivate it in, and then that gives us the flexibility of choice when it comes to actually planting our grains next year. If we want to go ahead and plant a row crop, like corn or sunflowers on these fields, then we don't need to cultivate them. They'll be prepped and ready. So we're going to cultivate this, and we'll do this ourselves. We'll do this manually, save a bit of time, and give us something to do while we wait for the rain to stop. And then once the rain has stopped, we've then got to wait potentially for several hours for the crops to dry out 
and depending on how long this rain goes on, as I said, it's entirely possible that we might not be able to get any more harvesting done today at all, uh, which would be a bit of a shame, but perhaps not un completely unexpected. Make sure I tag everything. There we go. And I do plan on sort of running up and down on this field, but I wanted to at least clear this section off just to make it a little bit easier again for turning. Because we are quite close to some trees along here. go. So let's get those little bits that I missed. There we go. Now uh, we could be using the T7 for this but the T6 I think has got enough grunt to use. There's obviously a T7 on, uh, we'll do this at 10 miles an hour, it's definitely going to have the horsepower for it but this little T6 should be okay. Now obviously it'll be a bit of a struggle going back up the hill, but everywhere else it should be alright. We may drop a little bit of power, but hey, this is why we bought the T6, something that would be a little bit more universal. Something that we could do more than just one set of jobs with. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, I'm going to carry on doing some uh, oil seed cultivation. Okay, so it looks as though the rain is starting to ease off. In fact, yes, the rain is easing off. And there we go. The rain has stopped. So it's going to start brightening up a bit. At least I can turn my lights off again now. I'm going to carry on working on this field. I may as well get this finished. Uh, especially seeing as we still have to wait for our crops to dry out. But what I am going to do is I'm going to jump over to the harvester uh, as soon as I've done this pass. There we go. So let's turn the engine off for a second. Uh, let's jump over to the harvester. Ah, the price has dropped. It's now 280. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> the plan to maybe sell some of these wood chips, uh, that looks to have gone out the window as well. <laughs> the price is falling. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, uh, yeah, I was only going to sell if it was going up, and that's not the case, so... Uh, where is the combine? It's somewhere on this field. There it is. So we're going to need the Wopster. And let's take a look at our crop level now. Oops, not quite in the right position to scan. There we go. And you can see we're at 25%. That's way too damp for us to uh, to do any real harvesting. We've got to wait for that to dry out a little bit. Now, it does say, as far as rain goes in the season's manual, it's a little bit vague in a couple of places. Let me find the right section, and I'll uh, I'll read what it says to you. Oh, it's either under weather, or... Here we go, it's under, it's under weather, and there's a section for crop moisture. So, crop moisture is simulated in the season's mod, Rain and hail increases crop moisture, while sunny weather helps to decrease it. An icon will show on the harvest, uh, show on the screen when the crop is too moist to harvest crops. So you can see we still have our moist crop symbol up there next to our autumn symbol. So it's definitely too wet for us to harvest at the moment. Uh, when the crop is moist, it is also not possible to turn grass into hay by using a tedder. So you have to let the grass dry out a bit before you can use the tedder. 
Crops will dry faster in the summer than in autumn, both due to the lower temperatures in autumn, but at this time of year there is also much less solar radiation. At night time, the crop will grow very slowly, as yet there is no modelling of wind. This will mean that if you are unlucky and experience a late afternoon shower in autumn, you might not be able to harvest before next morning after sunrise sometime. Note that you can turn this feature off if it's too bothersome for you. There is a toggle in the Seasons menu settings. Now there is another mention of crop moisture under Crops. Uh, and this is what I am looking for right now. I think it was under Crops. Uh, maybe it wasn't under crops. Let me have another look. Maybe it's under measuring. Yeah, it might be under measuring, actually. So we can see uh, the crop moisture. Here we go. So the crop moisture under measuring, which is where the Wopster sort of breakdown is, used for determining if you can harvest the crop. In the future, you will always be able to harvest, but higher moisture level uh, gives lower quality. Capped to 25%, which is fully moist. So, that suggests that in the future, you know, we will always be able to harvest a moist crop, but we will end up sort of losing out on some potential yield if we do harvest crop that isn't fully, uh, you, know, you know, isn't fully dried out. So you can see we're at 24% at the moment. It's still way too high. Uh, we still have the moist crop symbol. So we can't do any harvesting for quite some time. So we're going to carry on working on this field here. I need to put in my uh, turning arc along here. So this is going to be cutting in at a strange angle. But so I can then run along this edge here and create a nice up and down part for us to run up and down this way. That way I'm not having to constantly worry about the traffic. Kind of like a, a border again, so to speak. But yeah, I'm going to carry on working on this field, cultivating all of this in. Uh, I'll let you know when the crop symbol or the crop moisture symbol disappears and we will periodically jump back and we will check out the actual level of moisture. Uh, it seems to suggest that at the moment, as long as the moist crop symbol is gone, it doesn't matter when we do our harvesting. I'm not entirely sure if that's the case. It may possibly be that, you know, uh, the quality of the crop is not affected in the current build of seasons. It depends how old that manual is, how you know when it was written and whether it's been updated since it was written. I would imagine it's pretty up to date. But yeah, I'll carry on working over here and then as I say, when the crop symbol moisture simple disappears, we'll jump back and we'll take another look at the uh, moisture level of the crops and then we may wait towards the end of the day and just get our soybean harvest and then we'll try and do the corn tomorrow and we'll see if we have the same issues. taking out this angled section of the field here you can see our crops are still way too moist way too damp for us to actually do any harvesting yet and uh, well it's about to turn two in the afternoon so as I did say there was a very real risk that that rain would knock us out harvesting wise for the rest of the day I mean there's still plenty of time left in the afternoon but it is ticking away and as yet no indication that our crops might be dry enough. Let's just uh, scan the moisture level of our uh, radish. 
You see, that's at 21% still, and I could, you've got to imagine that it would have had the same moisture level as our soybean. So, if that is the case, we're talking still hours and hours and hours before we can even think about harvesting. It's going to be a very sort of uh, long kind of wait. I mean, we've got plenty of this field left to do, and that'll keep me going for another hour or two at least. Probably a good two hours worth of running up and down the field. I guess we'll find out how long it takes me to do this and how long it takes for our crops to actually dry out as the rest of the day progresses. Okay, so as I get into the end of that last pass, the symbol for moist drops has now disappeared. So, uh, let's just scan this and see what the uh, the ground is saying now. So, you can see it's dropped to 20%. Now, I wonder if that's the same over on the other field as well. Turn the engine off. Let's jump over to the combine. And let's scan the ground over here as well and see if this also is at 20%. It is. So that's your cutoff limit. That's your threshold. 20% is as uh, damp as the crops can get before they are too damp for harvesting. So it's not too bad. You know, it's not like we've got to wait for it to drop to like 10 or 15 because that would have taken you know a long, long time. As you can see, it's it's gone three o'clock in the afternoon. And we still have, you know, uh, this bit here to finish. But, you know, if we had to wait until, say, the crop was at 10% moisture before we could even attempt to harvest it, this day would be over by that point, you know, <laughs> considering when it stopped raining and how long it's taken to drop 5%. Yeah, this day would be well and truly over before we even got the chance to try harvesting again. So, I mean, that's not so bad. And I believe at the moment there is no negative impact of harvesting right away. But I'm going to finish this build off anyway, which will give that crop a little bit more time to dry out. And then we'll finish that field. And I think then we'll probably be out of time for the rest of the day. So I don't know whether or not we'll do the other soybean field as well. We'll see how long it takes us to finish this field here. And we'll see then how long it takes us to do the rest of that harvest. It might not take us that long, actually, because there's not a lot of it left. So we might as well do the, soy, the other soybean field if we have the time. It might mean working into the, uh, the late hours, but we have good weather now for the rest of the day. We're going to have the same issue tomorrow, as you can see in our forecast. We do have rain predicted for some point tomorrow as well. And if it starts off wet, then again, we'll do some more cultivating. We'll cultivate that radish first. We'll let the crops dry out. Then we'll go and harvest our corn. Uh, if not, you know, if worse comes to worse and it's a very, very wet day indeed, we can always put our harvest off until Wednesday, day five, because we are forecast to have good weather. And actually looking at the forecast, you can see ahead as we move into winter, day three, we are predicting some snow. So that'll be interesting to see how heavy that snow is, how much of it we get, whether we're going to end up with enough to cause multiple layers of snow building up or if it'll just be a single thin layer. Interesting times ahead, I think. Right, so let's get this field finished, and then we'll get the harvesting completed. Ah, well, there we go. We have finished our cultivation. So this field is now prepped and ready for next uh, next spring, ready to get the next crop put in here. And by then, it'll also... well. It's already got stage one fertilization on it as well. So assuming that we plant, well, it doesn't matter which of our seeders that we use to plant, they both apply fertilizer. So we'll be at stage two simply by planting and then we'll be able to fertilize as well. You can see there is our uh, winter barley coming in. Yeah, we'll only need one stage of fertilization left to apply to field two. And it'll be the same with a field yeah, with our other big field over there as well. That one, once we cultivate that also sort of radish in, we'll only need to put you know, one additional stage of fertilizer on that field. That'll free up a little bit more time to do some other stuff, but if we don't have much more land 
then there is a risk that we could end up with not much to do in spring. Let's get this clean. We'll put away. And then we'll go and finish our soybean harvest. We're not going to need the T6 for the rest of the day either. We are going to need to bring the T7 back up as well. I'm going to leave the other trailer down by the sawmill, I think, but I'll put it under, under the covers. So let's return this back to its little bay. drop the weight off, drop the tractor off, and then collect the T7 from the sawmill and make our way back up to do the rest of our harvesting. Okay, so we are back where we need to be. Let's uncover the trailer. Let's jump back into the combine. And let's get this field finished off. It shouldn't take us very long at all. So yeah, we've got plenty of time to get the other field done as well. Let's just check the uh, moisture level, see if it's dropped any further. Down to 19%. It's still pretty high, but uh, as I say, at the moment, it, according to the manual, there doesn't appear to be a negative modifier for harvesting at this stage. It says in the future. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this harvest as is. And hopefully we're not going to get too bad a yield out of it. See the sun providing those intricate shadows as the uh, as it pokes through the trees. Really is a very pretty time of year with the uh, the change in the in the foliage. You can see those wonderful different shades of orange and brown poking through. Really does transform the landscape quite dramatically. And it's a wonderful visual effect. Some maps are going to look a lot better than others, you know, depending on the way that the trees are positioned. Uh, some, you know, if there's a lot of foliage on certain maps, then you're going to get a wonderful kind of dichotomy of colours like this. You can see oranges and reds and browns and and uh, sort of golden colours, as well as green mixed in there as well. Other maps, uh, maps that are a little bit uh, more sparsely sort of populated with vegetation, you're not going to see as much of a transformation. I'm really looking forward to when Gerala changes into autumn because uh, there are some wonderful tree placements and trees lining roadsides that are going to look abs absolutely spectacular once autumn hits and those start to change colour. You can see there we've got a tree there as well that's still got remnants of green and just the edges of the leaves you can see are starting to uh, to brown off a little bit. Yeah, it's just it's so nice to see such a, a variety of colour in our trees rather than just you know the standard green that we normally get it just makes such a visual difference it really does and a 
course, these reflections that we get as well. I, I swear the sunlight engine is a little bit different in seasons as well. The lighting effects we get with the sunlight bouncing off on certain angles, it just looks spectacular. And that's enough of me gushing about just how good this looks. We've got work to do and uh, not a huge amount of time left in the, on the video to get it done. So I'm going to kind of skip forward a little bit till this field is finished and we get ready to start on the next one. straight into doing a, a headland border on this side here to negate that fence being in the way that's another thing that we could potentially do as well I mean obviously we've got that open gate door there I'm guessing that's going to disappear as well but uh, we could link this field you know these two fields together once the update comes in by removing the fence that we have here that would turn this into one big field that would actually be quite useful I think in terms of uh, the amount of crop we could get. You know, we could uh, certainly do an extra couple of passes in the width between, or at least one more pass. Maybe do a little bit of field re-sculpting as well. Let's create this turning headland on this field here. Look how bright that sun reflection is there on that back panel. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I keep going on about it, but it, it truly does look absolutely stunning. Right, we've got a turning area. Let's start running up and down. Do the same when we get to the other end. We'll put a, a couple of passes in. I think we have another fence down there. Again, another grass field. And then we'll uh, probably hire a worker to finish this build off for us. looks like su that's such a great scene there the combine spitting out the residue at the back you can see little bits of uh, little bits of grain popping out along with the dust little bits of residue and you've got the autumn trees in the background and you can see the sun trying to shine through them the shadows across the field that really is a wonderful little scene and look at that from that angle as well I think that might be our thumbnail I don't know, I've taken a few screenshots while we've been recording. Uh, there's going to be some interesting ones to choose from for this uh, for the thumbnail for this episode. This could be a strong contender. I just thought I'd take a quick look at the sawmill price for wood chips. <laughs> it's uh, it's still falling. 
into 270 now. And of course, it's going to fall even more, I think. Oh, no, it might actually go up. Ooh, now here's an interesting thought. Tomorrow, we should still be under great demand, but we're going to get a big jump in price. Potentially. Depends how much it keeps falling today. Uh, but tomorrow, we could potentially get quite a big jump in price. So we could take advantage of that uh, great demand first thing in the morning and sell a bunch of wood chips just then for considerably more money than we would if we sold them right now and still be under great demand rules so no variation or no drop in price after a single trailer gets uh, gets dumped in that is something to think about so yeah we'll, we'll double check the price again tomorrow first thing in the morning and if it's still good because we had 24 hours then it may mean getting up very early in the morning and delivering a load of wood chips into the sell point before we do anything else. We've taken over manual control of the harvester again and you can see the sun is setting. Uh, this day is, in terms of time, has worked out quite nicely. We were lucky that the rain fell as early in the day as it did, in some respects. If it had fallen a, an hour or two later, then, well, a couple of hours later, then it could have caused us some serious problems in terms of getting the rest of this harvest done before we lost the light. In that situation, I suppose we probably would have carried on working into the very small hours of the evening if necessary but we've got that wonderful sunset now just peeking out over the trees just this last strip of the field to go and then we can take our total harvest back and dump it in our silo uh, so not a stellar amount of soybean, a lot less than I was expecting and I'm not 100% certain whether that's because we've harvested at a point when the ground was actually still a little bit too damp or the crop was still a little bit too damp. But regardless, I mean, I mean they're not huge fields so I don't think we were ever going to get a massive load of soybean off this field. But we've got enough to uh, at least make a decent dent. And if we can get a really strong price next summer, this will be quite a nice little boost of cash. Not of the sort of epic, life-changing kind of amount. But uh, if we can get, say, as high as two and a half grand for this at its absolute peak, you know, a single trailer of this could be worth quite a bit of cash. We could be looking at, you know, a 30,000 trailer. I don't even think we've got that much. I think we're probably going to have about 25,000. Oh, it's a little thin strip just left there. Just see that popping in. I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab that because we don't have... Every, yeah, we don't have as much soybean as I'd like. So if I run here, we should see a little bit of stuff pop into the header. As we move a little bit further along. There it is. Just that little bit but it gives us an extra few a few litres, as you can see. That appears to be everything. Let me zoom out as best I can, rotate around. It doesn't look as though we've missed anything else. Yeah, that looks to be everything. Nothing else is showing. Yeah, we got it all. Okay, so uh, let's get this dumped into the trailer. We'll put the header back on the um, on the header trailer. Pick up the other header. Take these back to the farm, and then tomorrow we'll try our corn and get that corn harvest done. So. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim Bob, and I'll be back with another episode of Seasons in the Valley very soon.